Good morning. Good morning on this second Sunday of Advent. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. We extend a warm welcome to all who are watching us virtually. Today's Mass intentions is for the soul of Tony Montemayor, Vivian Garcia, and for the birthday blessing of Penelope Hernandez. Our principal celebrant is Father Freddy, come celebrating as Father David, being assisted by our acolyte, Sergio. Please tune in to your radio station to 100.9 to listen to the liturgy. Thank you and God bless you. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. My friends, our God is not done with us yet. Amen. Amen. Super. And today, in this weekend, we see how history itself affirms that. My friends, before we begin, let us first recognize our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Sent to heal the contrite of heart, carrying, carrying, carrying a little 
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. Wrapped in the cloak of justice from God, bear on your head the mitre that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor. You will be named by God forever, the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up, Jerusalem. Stand upon the heights. Look to the east and see your children gathered from the east and the west at the word of the Holy One rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you. But God will bring them back to you, borne aloft in glory as on royal thrones. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low, and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground, that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forests and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory, with his mercy and justice for company. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the 
seed to be sown. They shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. A second reading from Philippians. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you. Because of your partnership from the gospel for the first day until now, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord be with you. And with, and your, with spirit. your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. In, my heart. in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Uteria, Draconius. Lysenius was tetrarch of Abilene. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. A voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his path. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My friends, let me start off by sharing with you a story that I heard about a young woman 
named Maria Luis, better known as Maddie, who lived in the country of France. Now, everyone in her family were musicians. And so she grew up at the age of three playing the piano. She not only dreamed of being a concert pianist, but she practiced and she trained to fulfill her dream. Everything she did was about becoming the great concert pianist. And her talent was amazing. At the age of 18, she was already playing for top dignitaries of the country. Indeed, she was incredible. But this was during the War War II, and Hitler's army arrived in France and took possession of the country. Maddie's world will, would change dramatically. She was a Catholic Christian, and so she decided that she needed to be a part of the resistance against the German army. And so at the age of 19, she became a spy for the resistance. She would put on piano concerts for the German officials. And after that concert, she would visit with the officers and those gathered for that concert. And what she would do is she was gathering information about the war. Later on, she would pass that information to the resistance. Well, this took place for a few years. But eventually, the German army found out what was happening and the, the betrayal of Maddie. And so Maddie became their prisoner. For the next several months, almost every day, Maddie was tortured by a young German doctor named Leo. Eventually, as we know, France was liberated and the Germans lost the war. But the torture inflicted on Maddie had changed her so much that the life that she went back to was nowhere near what she had before. The damage that was done to her central nervous system, her arms and her hands made it impossible for her to play the piano. She spent the rest of her life longing to create music, but was unable to do so. Maddie had a dream, but that dream was over. She also wanted to be a mom, but because of the torture of Dr. Leo, it would be impossible for her to ever have children. Her life was now one of constant and severe pain. We, we can look at her story and, and we may think, at 21 years old, her story was over. She was done. That was the end of her dream because there's no coming back after something like that. Maddie herself could look at her life and say, no one can fix this. And you know what? She would be right. She would be speaking the truth. No one could fix her situation. And because of that, I'm sure she must have felt that her life was over. My friends, maybe in your own life, you know the truth of that statement. Because at times, life can feel as it, if it is over. It is done. I think some of us have felt that way in this past year. Because no doubt, it has been difficult with the many changes that this virus has inflicted upon us. We have experienced real sickness, unemployment, hardships, isolation, and even the death of our loved ones. And many have made the comment, we can't come back from this. 
Or maybe in your life, it hasn't been the virus of this past year that has caused so many difficulties and struggles within your life. I know, I know some of you have suffered heartbreak like you have never, ever experienced before with the end of a relationship. It's over. It's done. That's the end. No one can fix it. Or maybe there's other types of struggles within your life that lead you to that same conclusion, life is over. Who can bring us back from this? My, th my friends, I think it's safe to say that all of us at some time or another have come to the point of believing that it is over. That's it. It's the end. No one can fix it. There is no way to come back from all of this. Well, my friends, when we are at, in that state of mind, I think it's important to remember this truth. Yes, the dream may be over, but the story is not. Yes, this might be the end of your dream, but not the end of your story. I realize it's difficult to believe that when we are in the middle of the, of the difficulty and the struggle and we so strongly believe that it is the end, mm. that there is no coming back from this. But that is one reason that Father Freddie and I, and more importantly, the church continues to tell you to familiarize yourself with the Bible. Amen. Because it is filled with people who have said the same thing. It is done. It is the end. It is over. No one can fix this. In fact, that's what we have in the first reading of today from the prophet Baruch. He's writing about the most devastating thing that happened to the people of Israel concerning the promises of God. God promised Abraham and the people of Israel that he would make them a great nation and that he would, in fact, bless the entire world through them. That was the promise of God. And every Jewish person hung all their hopes on that promise. And so when the people of Israel prospered, especially under the kingship of David and Solomon. The people felt as if they were living the dream, that all was good in their lives. But after Solomon, the one who took the throne, was not a good king. And so the people lost everything. The kingdom divided into ten tribes in the north and two tribes in the south. The people of Israel were no longer united as one. And because of that, the enemies of Israel came and destroyed those ten tribes in the north. And those ten tribes would never recover. They were never seen or heard from again. And I am sure the people were saying, it is done. The dream is over. How are we to come back from this? Or maybe they were saying, well, at least we still have Jerusalem, the holy city where the temple is located. But they didn't have that for long because another enemy came and took possession of that city. And then they sent those people, the people of Israel, into exile away from their own country, away from the temple. Now, I want you to imagine the people in that situation. They had no kingdom. Mm. They had no land of their own. Mm. They had to be thinking that the story was over, that the dream of God that he promised was over, that it was the end. My friends, when you are at this point, it is good to be reminded of the powerful truth that our God does not start anything he doesn't plan to finish. Amen. 
That is the tru truly the story of the Bible. God does not start something he doesn't intend to finish. When a person becomes more familiar with the Bible, that person's going to realize how much of the story concerning the people of God is written in darkness. There's so much written in the Bible in what looks like it's the end. Take, for instance, the second reading. It comes from what we know to be the prison letters of St. Paul. Not because he was writing to people who are in prison. No. They are known as prison letters because he is writing his letters from prison himself. It was he who was in prison. He was writing these letters to fellow believers from prison. We look at his life at that point as he's in prison and we could come to the conclusion he's done. It's the end. How in the world can he bounce back from this? It's over for Paul. How can he accomplish God's will now? But what was St. Paul's state of mind? He wrote, Rejoice, for I am confident. Amen. Really, Paul? Come on. How can you be so confident in the situation that you're in? He tells us in the second reading of today, he says, I am confident because the one who began a good work and you will continue to complete it. Amen. Amen. My friends, St. Paul knew the story. Mm. He had come to know that, yes, it might be the end of the dream, but it was not the end of the story. It was not the end of his journey. Mm -hmm. He knew that God works even in darkness in what looks like the end and what looks like there is no hope. St. Paul knew that it might be the end of his dream, but it was not the end of his story. Mm -hmm. He knew that God does not start something that God does not intend to finish. That's right. And so... What he said was, I am confident that the one who began a good work will bring it to fulfillment. Amen? Amen. So my friends, this is the reality for you and me. God has started a good work in every one of us. God has begun something in your life that is not yet done. That is so important to know. God has started something in your life that is not yet completed. No matter what is taking place in your life, God has begun a greater work within your life. And that greater work is that you will be His. Amen. My friends, for you... To be his is the good work that God has already started within you. That you will become the person he has crafted, called, and consecrated to be within this world. That is the great work he has begun in you. And no matter what difficulty is present in your life, today is not the end. Amen. That is why we have that first reading from the prophet of Baruch who can write the people who are suffering, who are questioning God, that he can write the people and he could, the people who are seeing their dreams come crashing down and he could tell them, mm -hmm. rejoice that you are remembered by God and that God is fighting for you. Yes. In fact, God had never stopped fighting for them. Mm. And he has not stopped fighting for us. Even when it appears to be darkness, and even if it appears that God is silent, God is present to us. And so what does that mean? It means that God has not stopped and therefore we cannot stop. No, sir. Even though it seems as if God is absent, that God is silent, we must realize that he is present. In times of war, our God is present. In times of peace, our God is present. In times of turmoil and suffering, God is present. In time where all is calm, God is present. God is here with us. We are called.
to continue to walk in faith even though it seems dark. We, not might, we may not be able to see him or even feel him, but God is with us. And I want to show you how I know that to be true looking at the gospel of today. I want to center in on those first words of the gospel that says, In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. My friends, those words are so important to us and they speak a truth that we need to recognize. There is a reason that Matthew is very specific of the time and the names that he mentioned. It is to inform us that he is writing about a specific historical time that happened in the life of the people. Matthew is telling us how awful, how terrible it was at that time. Because every person that he mentioned in this gospel was evil. We know that Tiberius Caesar was worse than Nero, more violent and cruel towards the people. Pontius Pilate was a terrible leader taking advantage of his position for himself. Not even the leaders of the faith community, Anas and Caiaphas, were righteous in any way. Matthew wanted us to know that the government along with the church at that specific time were terrible. Mm -hmm. It was the worst of times. And the people believed that God had forgotten his promises, that God had abandoned them. But Matthew also writes about the fact that in the midst of this terrible time, God sent John the Baptist. In other words, God was working in the favor of the people. But even more than that, you and I know a deeper truth. We know that by that point, with Tiberius as Caesar, Pontius Pilate as governor, and Caiaphas as a high priest, when it was the worst of times, we know that Jesus had already been on this planet for 30 years. God was present during this most terrible time. The Son of God had already been born into the world. And God had already begun the process of salvation for the people. Jesus was among the people fighting for them for already 30 years. And nobody, but nobody knew it. Nobody could see it. All they could see and say was, how can it get any worse than this? Our dream is over. Well, maybe so. The dream was over. But the story was not. My friends, God does not begin something he doesn't intend to finish. My point is this. God is not done. And so you and I are not done either. Which brings me back to Maddie in the story I shared with you at the beginning of this sermon. As I said... She spent her life in constant and severe pain, longing, longing to make music and to be a mother of children. But neither one of those dreams were possible. But she did not spend the rest of her life wishing things were different. She accepted what had happened to her and decided that she would not consider her life a tragedy. She said, I have accepted that the great work of my life that God has begun is not to be a great pianist, nor is it to be a mother of children. The great work that God has begun in my life mm -hmm. is for me to be like Jesus. Mm. And so every day, Maddie would pray and ask the Lord to make her heart like the heart of Jesus. So that if she ever had the opportunity to see the one who tortured her, 
she would forgive him like she knew the Lord Jesus would. My friends, 40 years after her captivity, in 1984, Maddie received a letter from the doctor, Leo, who was the one who had tortured her, was now a, an old man and was dying. Dr. Leo admitted that he always remembered Maddie his whole life long. And he knew he didn't want to die before he asked her for, for forgiveness. So he wrote a letter to her asking if they could meet. And Maddie agreed. And when Dr. Leo saw Maddie, he fell to his knees before her. And with all his strength, he begged her through the tears that he shed for that forgiveness. Maddie, standing in front of him, knowing that this was the person who had tortured her so severely. Maddie reaches out her crippled hands towards Dr. Leo who had ruined her life. And Maddie tenderly embraced him. And she said, I forgive you. Hmm. Later she described that moment saying, I dropped Dr. Leo into the heart of God hmm. and I realized that at that moment by forgiving him I liberated myself my friends the great work of her life was not to become a great musician or even a mother of children the great work of her life that God had begun was to have a heart like Jesus and even though her dreams had ended, her story had not. My friends, I know that some of your dreams have ended. I know that some of your lives have not worked out in the way that you had planned. But what I also know is that your story has not ended. Your journey with the Lord has not ended. I know some good works that have began in your life have been put to the side. But my friends, there is a greater work that God has begun within you. And he will bring that work to completion because our God does not start something that he doesn't intend to finish. Mm. So my friends, when you are in darkness, and it seems as if God is not present. Just remember, God is close by. Remember that he is present to you. Remember that he is fighting for you. You may not see him. You may not feel him. But he is there. He has not stopped. And so that means you cannot stop. Just because your dream may be over, your story is not over. Your journey continues with the Lord. And so my prayer is for each and every one of you that you allow God to bring your story, Amen. to bring your journey to fulfillment. Amen. Amen. Let us proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all, all things, things visible and invisible. And I believe in one Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, the only, the only begotten Son, Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from, from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, Mary and became man. For our, our sake, sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. My friends, there's a beautiful Chicano proverb that says, Pensaron que los bien enterrado no sabían que éramos semillas. Mm. They thought they had buried us, and they did not know we were seeds. With that confidence that God is not done with us, let us bring our intentions to our Lord. Amen. That the Spirit of the Lord may rest upon all who have entrusted with authority in the church. Give them wisdom, counsel, and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. prayers. That God may raise up sovereign in every nation who will judge the poor with justice and decide a right for the oppressed and afflicted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. That in keeping with Jesus Christ, we may learn to think in harmony with one another, welcome one another for the glory of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. That John the Baptist, the thundering preacher of Advent repentance, may cry out in the desert of our secular world, compelling us to make straight the way of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. That the God of endurance and encouragement may lift up and console those who are weighed down with poverty, disease, or grief, especially those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. That Jesus, who was baptized, who baptized us with the Holy Spirit, and with the fire, may take our faithful departed like chosen wheat into his barn to save in heaven forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those intentions that we bring in the silence of our own heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, knowing that you are not done with us, we lift to you our intentions through your Son's name, Jesus Christ. We turn to Our Lady of Guadalupe as we celebrate her second day of the novena as we look forward to her feast day as we say, Hail Mary. Full of, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice, the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue. 
for the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. He gave you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands. Confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Story of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and the saving back great gracious to endow us with his very Spirit, 
who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make us, your church, a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, with all other bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, our most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles, with Saint Juan Diego, and with all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. We pray especially for Tony Mayor, Vivian Garcia, Luisa Calderon, Lord God, bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. from sin and safe from all the stress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace you grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us give each other a sign of peace. Oh 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm, I'm not worthy, worthy you should enter into my, my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. My friends, if you cannot leave your vehicle for any reason, please turn on your hazard lights and somebody will come to your side and administer to you the sacrament of the Blessed Sacrament. Thank you. For those who cannot receive sacramentally at this time, we offer their spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly with you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Say 
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This week, we've already started the novena to Our Lady of Guadalupe. It started yesterday. You can still catch up and continue it. We'll be doing it before Masses, during the daily Masses, and I believe tomorrow around in the evening at the Shrine. We will also have Our Lady of Guadalupe celebration on the 11th, which is next Saturday, starting with a 3 p.m. procession in Scar Burr, because apparently I mispronounced that all last week. So at Scar Burr, you will have the beginning of the procession at 3 p.m. going down Carver Street and arriving here at uh, the shrine before 5 p.m. We'll be giving Our Lady Reliquia through uh, dance, music, and food, and the participation also of the Altarcito competition. If you want to see what the example of Altarcito is, I put a few examples, and for a few questions that were asked, no, you don't have to have a Mexican flag on there. No, you don't have to... There's a lot of things that you don't have to do, but just make it your own. You know, whatever you do would be great. I mean, it'll be good. So uh, if you haven't registered yet for your family, your ministry, or your child who's wanting to do an altarcito, you can call the office and we'll take your registration over the phone. We're just asking that each altarcito provide 100 uh, goodies to, to give out, whether it be candy, uh, pan dulce, tamales. We need more tamales. So if you can bring more tamales, it'll be great. <laughs> so um, needless to say, we're, we're very excited to, to be celebrating our paternal feast day. We also will have youth group this Tuesday at 7 p.m. in the youth building for anybody in sixth grade and above. We'll be talking about Our Lady of Guadalupe, her cultural, religious, and her importance to us as a youth. <laughs> I say us as a youth. But her importance to the youth of being Our Lady of Guadalupe. So I look forward. I am a youth. You are, you are. Yeah, I am. Half father, father, father to David's age. Um, <laughs> so you're a youth. <laughs> you, you, you. <laughs> Whew. Okay. So we look forward to everybody's participation this week. And uh, the Guadalupe Pilgrim Center is open on Sundays during Masses. If you'd like to go there, please exit the parking lot and, and park on Tyler Street. Anything that you contribute to Our Lady of Pilgrim Center is for your spiritual growth, but also for the growth of our shrine. Thank you. Park on Garden Lane. Park on Garden Lane. Good morning. Good morning. I have really great news and so excited to announce that we will be having our annual Jamaica um, this uh, April, this coming year. Uh, it's going to be the last weekend of April, so we're excited. And our, father, the, our priests are super excited. It'll be our first year. Father Freddie would join us so we can show him how we do it here at Our Lady Guadalupe. Um, so uh, actually, we're going to be picking up. Do you have any tickets and money that you need to turn in? You can actually turn those in at the end of Mass on the um, many box okay also if you need to pick up tickets more tickets or you want to uh, hand out the money will be at casa de amigos after each mass and that's on garden lane and uh, tyler street thank you and please support our lady guadalupe thank you and god bless it's not a competition but i already have 16 books sold already father david has 20 yeah that's right <laughs> i love you Father David has 20 that he hasn't sold yet, so help Father David. I need Andrew your Shane. help. I need your help. <laughs> First of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone that attended our first uh, Christmas pancakes with baby Jesus yesterday. It was a great success. Thank you, Father David, Father Freddie, uh, for supporting the religious education, the CCD. It was awesome. I want to also say thank you to uh, Carnation Creations for doing one of the scenery, the background, and Terry and Michelle and Alicia 
for doing the other. So if you want to take pictures sometime during the week, let me know and we can open it up and y'all can take some pictures. Um, also, I am needing, we are going back into classrooms for the third grade through ninth grade into the classrooms starting next year. And so I need teachers, I need catechists. If you're called to teach the word of God to our children, we need you. Don't be afraid. We will train you. I won't just throw you in there. I promise. <laughs> I will train you. Um, but you already have it in your heart to, to show the kids Amen. how much you love them and how much Jesus loves them. So please pray. Come Contact me. It's on the bulletin. And also on the bulletin, it shows the grades that I'm really needing help with. So uh, if you can come and help us. And again, I want to also thank our catechists that helped us yesterday. They did an awesome job. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Jamie. Birthdays. Birthdays. Anybody have a birthdays? We have a few birthdays at this mass. Penelope oh. Hernandez. Hey. Happy birthday, Penelope. And we also have 50 years of anniversary for Jose de Jesus y Alejandra Barrios. 50 years. <laughs> so congratulations to all of you celebrating a birthday. If you're celebrating your birthday, please honk your horn or turn your lights on and receive a blessing. Good and gracious God, we give you great thanks for allowing us to celebrate bright life in all contexts and for the life that you give us to share with others. Bless these people who are here today on the celebration of their day of birth. Also celebrate those couples that are celebrating their testimony of God's love on earth, which is the love of a matrimony that represents the love of Christ and how he loved his church. Bless in a special way, Jose de Jesus and Alejandra Barrios, who have come to a golden anniversary. We ask you this. Through the sign of your cross, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Congratulations. <laughs> I didn't realize how loud that was. That's very loud. <laughs> Prayers for vocations. Lord Jesus, as you once called the first disciples to make them fishers of men, let your sweet invitation continue to resound. Come, follow me. Give young men and women the grace for responding quickly to your voice. Support our bishops. Father David and Father Freddie and all priests and consecrated people in their apostolic labor. Grant perseverance to our seminarians, to all those who are carrying out the idea of a life totally consecrated to your service. Mary, mother of the church, the motto of every vocation, help us to say yes to the Lord who calls us to cooperate in the divine plan of salvation. Amen. Amen. Thank you, bro. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you. And in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may go in peace. This mess has ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the mountain of the Lord. See his glory and his might. Worship cause his glory, his voice to be heard, and you shall have a song in the night. Come to the mountain of the Lord, see his glory and his might. He's the mighty one of Israel, the mighty one of Israel.
St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and stares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, into thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us.